Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Heavenly Parent Holy Community Oceania Hundoke with Reverend Yutaki Yamada. Today being Thursday, the 21st of October, or the 16th of September, in the ninth year of Chong Yul Guk. Let's begin by offering a bow to our Heavenly Parents and True Parents. Chariot. Kyumbe. Paro. And let's recite our family pledge, both in Korean and English. Thank you. Kajom Mense Sa Chanel Kuk Chuin Uri Kajogun Cham Sarangul Chunshimago Hanel Pumonime Chanjo Isain Chanju Te Kajogul Hyonso Hayo Chayua Pyonghawa Toinwa Hemboge Segeru Wanso Halkosl Mense Hanaida Family pledge number four. Our family, the owner of Chong Guk, pledges to build the universal family, encompassing heaven and earth, which is the heavenly parents' ideal of creation, and perfect the world of freedom, peace, unity, and happiness by centering on true love. Thank you. I'd uh, like to ask uh, uh, Margaret Sisson in uh, Palau, if she could open with the prayer. Thank you. Good morning, our loving Heavenly Parent. Good morning, true parents. We are so grateful to wake up this morning, to hear the birds, to breathe the fresh air, and to be reminded of your continuous love every day. We are also so grateful for our true parents and for this incredible truth that they have revealed for our blessings, for our families and for our nations. We pray heavenly parent that we give you joy today in what we do, what we think about and how we feel. Truly, this is a time in which we can, we are making history with our true mother, the only begotten daughter, the first coming of your daughter. For us women, it is incredible opportunity to be able to be liberated and to be able to become daughters that we have been longing to be. You have given us Jesus in the last 2000 years and now our true father and so for our brothers, it has been a great opportunity. And together now we can really complete your providence that you have been waiting for and to actually be having an opportunity to, to see our fatherland become one <clears throat> then you can really dwell, Heavenly Parent. But really, you can be with your children. And guide us, Heavenly Father, that we can bring great joy to our true mother. Thank you so much for Reverend Yamada with all these 40 days conditions that it reminds us that we still need to be vigilant in growing ourselves as well as making conditions so that you can work. Thank you for my brothers and sisters and together we offer this day to you 
And I offer this prayer representing all of our brothers and sisters, bless Central Family in the names of Tim and Margaret Sisterson. Bless Central Family. Aju. Aju. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And let's give a warm welcome to Reverend Yutaka as he shares with us this morning. Good morning, our brothers and sisters. Thank you for coming this morning from the K and a beautiful morning. We could hear the sound of bird, sound of air, and sound of animal. Our early morning is uh, beautiful with fresh air. So really we could see. So first heart we will offer to our heavenly parents and to parents and begin the day. So really I appreciate everyone to offer the heart together. So uh, now our sister, uh, Roa, uh, in the hospital because of a delivery for baby. So Reverend John also together support, he's here but supporting our member for her to be the safety delivery. So please pray for her. Maybe baby will be coming soon. So really new life is coming. This is really great. So this Sunday, coming Sunday, Chirmada is organizing the victory celebration of whole the event of ninth year of True Father's anniversary. So this Sunday, all leader and blessed family of the world join together and celebrate about the victory of those event. So this Sunday, please everyone join together and there we will reflect again and we will celebrate together with our actual mother on this Sunday, 9.30, I think 9.30 a.m. Korean time, okay? So let's continue our Funnake. Uh, yesterday, we are continuously sharing about the message of the true family and I from Pyongfa Gyeong. You could see and true parents visited to the each nation to give this speech. So thank you for your comment and also discussion yesterday. It was a really interesting discussion. Egg or chicken, which one were first, right? Yeah, this is really interesting, also important things. I research also the website. There, there are many kinds of comment from Christian side, from the Buddhist side for the Muslim side or scientific side, where there, there are many opinions. And there is some also the unification thought side. There is also, but I need to research more clearly. And if to the father mentioned about this, if we can find the message, I think also good. So anyway, uh, yesterday's contents, father is talking about the theory of evolution or theory of creation and also the story of human fall. So when I pray about this contents, I got some one insight, maybe you also some realization. So our human life before coming this world on this earth, we will stay 10 months in the mother's womb, right? As the fetus, we call fetus. So stay for 10 months and to prepare for the next world. So that meaning the fetus itself already uh, knew or already programmed to prepare for the next world. Even fetus was not born yet, but already inside of the mother's womb time in the world, in the water even doesn't use the all function of the body, but fetus time create the eyes, or as father mentioned yesterday, created the eyes and also arm, body, or everything. So why during fetus time that lung is coming? Because already, uh, already fetus situation, already the know there is the air and people have to live with the air. That's why in the fetus time, create the lung. And also, already the programmed people have to work on the land. That's why create the, uh, the uh, food and also create the eyes in order to see and also created 
the ear in order to hear and uh, created the mouth in order to eat or speak. So all one function was created in the mother's womb time period as the fetus. So I think all of us, we passed those process, but I believe nobody remember. I'm not sure someone remember that process, processing time in the last, our life in the mother's womb. Maybe nobody remember, right? So we don't remember, but automatically those pro process was happened and the created. So when I think this one, then what was the human fall? Divine principle mentioned that because of human fall, we became the ignorance. We had many times we became the ignorance. What meaning of to become the ignorance? When we, I, when I think yesterday and pray that things, if we became the in ignorance, ignorance, is that problem for us something? If we ignorance or if we are not ignorance, is that so much different? We are already living this kind of the foreign life or we current life without knowing God, without knowing the principle. This is some, something normal. That's why we are not so much serious or we don't know the differences, the ignorance or unignorance status. But yesterday when I pray, I my insight, in the fetus time, all things are programmed to create automatically, the create lung, create eyes, and create body for preparation for next world. This is really automatic, maybe already the program inside of the cell. That's why we are not worrying to prepare the pro preparing process inside of mother's womb, then we could live in this world. But in the fetus time, if this function was broken or a function was problem, or, or originally this function have to give the direction to the body or direction to cell to create eye, to create lung, create, uh, create arms or each function. If this function was broken, then what's happened? The eye cannot be created and lung, lung cannot be created or mouth, mouth cannot be created because this function was broken then if the fetus became baby and were born on this earth and this life is really uh, facing difficulty or problem. That's why the, we became ignorance because of fall. That meaning surely this function to be, to let us aware the God, let us aware the meaning to prepare from this world to next world and to the function to really uh, to feel the spiritual world. So those function itself was kind of the broken and the could not, could not uh, fix or could not catch this point. That's why that became the ignorance is really a big problem. And who will come and who will give this program to uh, reinstall to ourselves. This is really our Messiah and our true parents. And Satan tried to block this one and Satan to continuously to break this main function to let us realize God, realize the process to prepare this world to the next world. So uh, really, uh, through Father's message, there are very many meaning. So in order to get this truth, really our true parents' existence to show us the heart of God and really the existence of true parents, the existence of that spiritual world and the meaning of our life, those truths is really, really essential and really save and change the people's life. So uh, really I learned many things. So how we could understand these most important things actually in our life, but we lost the things and we became ignorance. That's why we are living the serious life or suffering life, life in this time. So because of true parents, we are bring back our truth, 
bring back heavenly parents to our life and bring back those function this program and this direction and this the meaning of our life to each of us this is really the important things and to prepare for the next world so anyway uh this chapter to the parents continuously talking about really god existence and the meaning of original mind and evil mind and also the human for meaning of human fall looks like we had many times but really this is the essential in order for us to prepare for the original life and to live the original life so how we can share and really testify and introduce to all our brothers and sisters in the world divine principle existence of our heavenly parents and the meaning of true parents and the meaning for the next world those world is really essential so father said so god surely established a strategy to weaken the body centered force that dominates our conscience that's why god continuously working with us in order to go back to the original state and to go back to find god and go back to become the old or some process to become the ideal man, ideal family, ideal nation, and ideal world. So really, Father's message is great. So you lead the continuation of the message. The purpose of religion, the world cultural spheres were formed according to the different human circumstances and antecedents to this day religious people have not known that the purpose of religion is to prevent the body from continuing to lead the mind had there born had had there been no fall religion would not have been necessary so father is talking about the meaning and purpose of religion there are many religion in the world and some of them some jewish people believe god right Christian also believe God and also Jesus follow to the word of Jesus and uh, Islam believe Allah and also follow the Quran. So those religion is believe one God. So why do they believe the religion? Why do they believe God? They want to go to the kingdom of heaven. What the reason why each person is following their religion? We have to think again and also beside of that there is a buddhist hindu and the confucian or zoroaster or even uh yeah mandayan or any kind of religion we could see so why people believe religion in order for them to live the good life in this world or in order for them to live the good life for the next world so three parents is mentioning and telling the purpose of the religion something went very wrong and religion became necessary to collect it what does god intend to do through religion god intends to discipline the body you will not be saved just because you believe in religion or go to heaven just because you believe in christianity however it is the children who are centered on God's love, who can go to heaven. Adam's family was to have had the love of God at its center. It was to have had a blood relationship with God. The kingdom of heaven is the place where such families dwell. We need to dominate the body in order to strengthen the power of the conscience, a liberated conscience then will lead our body and we will return to the bosom of god's love as original beings free from sin so what father mentioned what was the purpose of the religion which god created god intends to discipline the body so this is the purpose so what's the purpose of each religion even the purpose of religion is not just believe and to going to the kingdom of heaven through god's love through to create the lineage 
connection with God, we could go to the kingdom of heaven and how we could dominate our body with foreign nature. So this is really important. That's why Father is mentioning through religion's teaching, we will control, liberate conscience and control our physical body to prepare to return to the bosom of God's love. So really each religious meaning of and purpose of each religion is important. Therefore, it, if we ask what religion is supposed to do, the answer is that it needs to motivate our body to do everything it hates to do. What does the body hate most? To serve others, to sacrifice for others. Furthermore, religion asks us to be an offering. The offering is this thing to shed blood and be capable of sacrificing its life. Therefore, the Bible tells us that a person who is willing to lose his or her life shall find it. And a person who wishes to find his or her life shall lose it. So in order to going back to God bosom, religion will take a role to cut the relationship with Satan to dominate the human's body. So God prepare the religion. That's why religion is emphasized and telling the people to do for living for the sake of others, sacrifice and love for others, even offering their life. So Bible and Jesus also said, the person who willing to lose his or her life shall find it, and person who wishes to find his or her life shall lose it. So Father is mentioning about the purpose of religion. So what do you think? Do you think, do you agree that one? Or do you think there is another purpose of religion? Just satisfy own life? So we can think again. The Holy Father is mentioning about the purpose of religion and telling who is God, how we can understand the fall, how we can understand the God, and how we can prepare to go back to God. So we will meet many religious people and brothers and sisters. We really also can discuss and share those message. And really, we have to recognize or realize the real meaning of the religion and purpose. What this paradox teaches is that if we live according to the flesh, we are going to go to hell. If we gain victory over our flesh and liberate our cons conscience, we will go to heaven. If we subjugate our body's wishes and put our conscience in a totally subjective position, we will liberate the unlimited an infinite hope of the conscience. So those message which to father, to parents taught us, actually, that what is the main message? Do we really understand God? Do we really feel God? Do we really meet God? This is the really main point. That's why without knowing God, without meeting God, all process, all things, and all thing, all truth is not connected. That's why meeting with God, knowing with God is really essential matters and the history of human fall. So when we see the current society, it's actually this society is not dominated by God. Now we are living under domination of the Satan. And who, who are we? We are not children of God. Of course, children of God, but currently we are children of Satan and Satan's lineage. So how we could realize this, our existence and our identity. We have many kinds of lacking point. We have also many kinds of sin, how we can recognize and how we can depend and how we can really return back to the original state, which we are created a plan in the beginning by our heavenly parents. So to the parents continuously, let us understand and let us realize our status. So God educated and guide, God guided all our human beings through religion. 
and wishing us to come back to God's bosom. Please come back. Please realize yourself. You are living, but your life is actually not peaceful life. Maybe you look peaceful life, but not the best life yet. You are, you can have ideal life more than current situation because God created, God want to share, God want to teach, God want to guide more the people to return back the original status under God's eternal love. That's why it's religion and also three parents continuously guiding us. So when we see that each religion, we could see many religious peoples, our Muslim brother and sisters, they offer the prayer five times a day. When we see their Muslim brother and sisters' life, their life of faith is really serious and also the great. When I brought the Muslim member parliament last time in Malaysia to Korea to join the two fathers, two parents, some conference in Korea. So when we ride the bus and moving somewhere, but suddenly our Muslim a member of parliament said, ah, now the prayer time. Can we stop a short, can we have a short break? Then we stop some parking. Then suddenly he went to behind of the building and start to pray for God, pray for Allah. So really we could see their serious uh, life of faith. And our religion, religion of Hindu, they have also many kind of a, a ceremony for God. And when we see the Buddhist, we could see meditation or daily training period, the Buddhist brother and sisters. So each person, actually many people have a religion. They are following to the own religious doctrine or tradition. But how many of them, how many of us really understand the real meaning of or real purpose of each religion. So that's why three parents is really guiding and telling us beyond the own religion, beyond the own tradition, beyond own denomination, how we can return back the original purpose of God, intention of God, and the original way of religion or our human beings. In the course of history, there have been numerous religions and religions, religious leaders. Yet those who believed in those religions and in those leaders were not able to attain total control over the body and could not deny themselves completely. They could not liberate the conscience and place it in a position to relate with God on the original basis. We sinful people did not become true olive trees. Instead, we remained wild olive trees with our roots in a false love. Human beings were to have had roots in God true love, yet we established roots in Satan's love. How are we going to resolve the problem of being wild olive trees instead of true ones? This remains an inevitable and crucial task. So many religious people or religious leader, they are following their religion, but they could not create original relationship with God. Cannot reach that moment yet. And actually they are waiting. God is prepared and they are should go to connect with our true parents. So we could see that those situation, how each person can fulfill their responsibility or their role of religion or their role of their as a believer of each religion. If you should, if you study yourself, you will notice that your conscience knows everything about you. The conscience is closer to you than your own parents are. It desires to possess true love to be embraced eternally in God's bosom. When we marry, we separate from our earthly parents, nor not from our conscience with which we are born. The conscience loves us and its mission is to transform us into eternal sons and daughters of God. So that's why we need to recognize and know about conscience more. 
Many times, the parents also emphasized to listen the original mind. And really, we heard this word also. So please put your hand to your chest, your heart. Most recently, most recently, when did you hear from your original mind, voice of your original mind, or voice of your conscience? Do you remember when is the last time to hear your voice of conscience? Do you remember? Did you hear today? Did you hear yesterday? How many times did you hear the voice of conscience yesterday? Do you remember? Many times? Or you don't, you are not aware of that one? That's why how many times are we recognized or are we aware of the voice of conscience? This is really important things. Every day, really busy. We are doing something. Yesterday, we do something. We did many things. But sometimes after, after spending one day, I, re I don't remember what did I do. I, did I do the important things? Did I do not important things? Every day, really so quick to finish a day. How much we are listening, we are listening the voice of conscience and following the voice of conscience and following God. So even busy time, even any kind of situation, but really the one moment every night, every moment, really we reflect ourselves to communicate our heart, communicate with God, to prepare for the new day and new life. This is very important. So I will read this one again. Father said, if you study yourself, you will notice that your conscience knows everything about you. The conscience is closer to you than your own parents are. It desires to possess true love, to be embraced eternally in God's bosom. When we marry, we separate from our earthly parents, not from our conscience with which we are born. The conscience loves us and its mission is to transform us into eternal sons and daughters of God. That's why today uh, we are talking about really uh, conscience and really God's message and also God's word, how much each day we could understand and also the purpose of religion. Many people is following the religious, religion, own religion, believe God, and do that tradition. But really, what is the purpose of each religion? And really, are, are they, are we fulfilling and realizing and fulfilling the purpose of religion and really worship God? Once again, we need to remind again, reflect ourselves. And if we are going to the right way, we will more to do and really share more. We have, if we have a lacking point, always also repent ourselves and to adjust our way to go. Now, true father already went to the spiritual world and true mother is living on earth. The existence of true parents to give the truth, to showing the way, to connect all people to back to heavenly parents. This is actually really special things. If we really realize the meaning of existence of our two parents and our heavenly parents. So our time period, each moment is the golden time period with true mother. So we will, can see many possibility or potential. So we are gathered here today. Once again, we reflect through our true parents message in our life and prepare for the future. So today is a beautiful day beautiful morning let's have a great morning and to create share our love and share our heart to our heavenly parents and true parents thank you very much for joining this okay thank you very much for Nutaka. thank you for you know, really uh bringing a lot of understanding uh, regarding uh, uh the, the relationship uh, between our our body and our conscience and uh, 
you know, when you ask uh, you know, how often do you uh, uh, aware of your conscience, uh, actually, I, for myself, I don't know about others, but for myself, I'm uh, I'm continually aware of my conscience. I uh, when you mention that you, know, you get married and you separate from your parents and join your wife, but your conscience never leaves you. Yeah, uh, because the conscience is our essence. It is the the heart of our entire spirit. It it is uh, the point of connection with God. So we can it can never leave it. But uh, yeah, the 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 word liberate uh, our conscience. Uh, that that uh, uh, I, I'm reminded of uh, uh, Paul as he agonised over the flesh dominating you know, he wants to do the will of heaven but his body pulls him you know different places and uh i i see myself uh often often throughout the day i'm bargaining uh with my conscience and 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 my body my body wants to sleep my body wants to eat my body wants to have sex my body wants to you know be comfortable and i i am continually bargaining yeah, like I'll, I'll do this and then I'll rest or I'll do this and then, then I'll uh, eat something or, or, or sometimes it's the other way around. I'll, I'll eat first and then do this. So I find uh, this, uh, uh, this idea of liberation because I mean, that's the contradiction of, of people is to be in this uh, place because of the fall. The fall caused this situation to take place, hence we're dysfunctional. You know, we automatically grow in the womb, as you pointed out, uh, but we don't automatically grow in the spirit. So as soon as we're born, uh, we're, we're meant to have uh, this uh, connection with the, the mind leading the body, but the body is always leading. So the, I'm assuming that's how other people cope as well. They do this unconscious sort of bargaining uh, with, their, with the body to be able to function, because if we only did what the body said, we would not do anything. We would just become a blob. We would just sit in one space uh, and just eat and and then get fat and and die without actually doing anything. Uh, so I, I I think that you know, we, we're in this continual bargaining between our body and our conscience because it's not liberated and. Uh, and the key essence, as you said, about religion is to help us, uh, is, is to prevent the body from continuing to lead the mind. You know, so we have to you know, make it uh, suffer or sacrifice uh, to be able to you know, control ourselves. You know, that was like Father's three mottos and the first motto, you know, to get dominion over himself, otherwise he can't do anything. Uh, and that's true. You, you can only do something when the, when the mind is free to tell the body, you know, the, the good action to do. But if we're always listening to the body, we never do the good action, so we never grow. Uh, so we're, we're in this dysfunctional state. And, and, that, and the other thing about religion uh, uh, that, that is significant yeah, you know, you're mentioning you know it's it's the training ground. It's where we have to you know, learn how to discipline ourselves and that. The other thing uh, about it is that people can't do it alone, and religion is a support network of other people with the same mindset who say it's good, you know, to fast. It's good, you know, to do conditions, and so encourage us to keep doing it. If we were left alone, we'd give up. Uh, too easily, I think, and so uh, the religion support network uh, is is vital in in helping us to carry out you know, what what we need to do to be able to discipline ourselves, so that we can finally liberate the conscience. Uh, so yeah, but a lot of things uh, reflecting over and and realizing, yeah, yeah, do I. Hear my conscience. I hear my conscience all the time, I, and I'm bargaining with it all the time. Uh, but a lot of times, uh, I, I'm not so successful as I'd like to be. Uh, so, 
So we need the support network. So thank you. Thank you, Reverend Yutaka. Thank you, everyone. Uh, open it up to others to share. Yes, Mr. Rai, go ahead. Good morning. Thank you today. Again, and uh, as uh, Reverend John mentioned about uh, uh, St. Paul, uh, his uh, realization, uh, we have two law, one is good, one is uh, uh, bad. Then what a miserable person I am, what a select person I am. Uh, but actually, uh, I think uh, nearly one year ago, the one of the uh, realization, Levan uh, Yutaka says, uh, when <laughs> here uh, the latest uh, you know, uh, from realization from uh, consensus, I had one of the realization around one year ago. I, I, I was thinking, uh, why? Uh, Physical desire is so strong. Why it is incredible strong? Then some people say, uh, some except young people or uh, losing hope cannot control. It is very difficult to control. Then what a miserable person I am. Then some people can find out the solution. Uh, I think then I was thinking uh, when you know, I had a very strong uh, desire, it looks like not so easy control. Then that time, God is uh, love. And uh, God is really creating men, women. Uh, oh, that kind of all desire where I come from come from God. God came from God. That's why God gave us a solution and uh, more strong power, strong love. So I really suddenly <laughs> realized when we have an incredible strong, you know, for physical desire, thank you, you know, I have an incredible love incredible power of God of love, who can really, uh, who can, you know, overcome. So they, you know, when we having a, in that kind of situation, uh, I could find a joy. Thank you, God, you know, give us such a strong, you know, this is, uh, but we have to find out, uh, not automatically, you know, that is, uh, meaningful life we can find out incredible find out responsibility then uh then i was quite free you know that kind of environment i experienced just around one year thank you <laughs> thank you mr right thank you yes uh yes debbie uh, go ahead and then Mr. Ito after, Reverend Ito after. Yes, go ahead, Debbie. No, I just remember uh, before I joined the church, uh, I kept seeing an ad in the paper. And the ad said, sincere, conscientious people wanted to help all mankind. And that's, that was the church advertisement. Mm -hmm. And so that I joined because of that. And... Uh, well, uh, that's how I came to the church, was because of that ad. And I remember when I was quite young, uh, my friends and I, we went to a restaurant and we were joking around and there was a chandelier uh, above our table and I stole one piece of the chandelier and I took it home. And we were all laughing. And when in that night, I could not sleep. I was so, felt so guilty about that that I, the next day I went back to the restaurant and I, when nobody was looking, I put it back up there, you know? So <laughs> I felt so guilty. And I thought to myself, one time I was talking to Mrs. Kwok 
And she said, you know, before you were even born, True Father was praying for you. He was praying for you even before you were born. So I feel sometimes like we're, uh, we've been prepared in a way through our conscience or whatever to be in this church, you know, in this movement. And, and a, a lot of it ha might have to do with True Father's prayer. I don't know. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead, Reverend Ito. Yeah. Uh, uh, good evening. For the, uh, good morning from Brother Sister Bolsonaro. Uh, I'm very appreciative you know, of the Father's this idea of uh, conscience, conscience ideology. Like three subject uh, thought, you know, the conscience is our father, parents, and the master, and the owner. You know, this is a very, you know, uh, conscience is a you know, secret agent. God's secret agent in our self. So we cannot hide. <laughs> anyway, we really, how many times we give some suffering to conscience, you know, to reflect myself, you know, you know, conscience said like this, but my wish, my desire is different, something like this. And uh, we feel what we're doing and we feel pain myself inside, you know, many times, you know, such a thing and uh, happen, and uh, so we cannot ignore this conscience is uh, very very in ourselves, you know, God secret agent always watching us, not you know, like a Chinese or you know, some another, you know, spy in the watch looking at us from the space, you know. <laughs> but uh, God, you know, secret agent in ourselves <laughs> is watching us. So 24 hours, <laughs> right? So really, you know, we cannot escape and uh, by this, you know, better scare. But uh, also in, in another side, you know, God knows us and uh, God protect us. So we really appreciate and the father find out this is amazing, amazing discovery, amazing teaching, more than any kind of uh, ideology and uh, teaching. Thank you so much. Thank you, Reverend Ito. Thank you. Uh, go ahead, Randall. Okay. Um, I found that uh, I saw where Father said the body is the enemy of the spirit. And um, that's because it doesn't want to volunteer. And then I found out that the, my body had an enemy. And my enemy was my right hand. I would volunteer at different times. Okay, who wants to do this? And Trader, what are you doing against my body? And so anyway, there's uh, these different times when um, I found that was the way to, you know, challenge myself at different times. And um, uh, so that's why, you know, people all around the country have seen me because I'm driving for MFT or, you know, for Islanders and things like this at different times. Um, Back in the 90s, when uh, Paul Werner was out here, he would say, okay, don't just tithe your money, tithe your time. So the year is about 400 years, uh, 400 days old. So uh, it will last for, you know, just under 400 days. So 40 days a year, you know, try to uh, do something outside of your comfort zone, outside of your family to dedicate to the church. So I tried to, um, you know, get out uh, 40, 40 days a year or did before um, some health things kicked in. Um, on the conscience, uh, in the outline of the principle, uh, level four, there was a diagram uh, when it's talking about, you know, how you follow your conscience. And one of the diagrams was saying that there's, um, you know, the evil mind is basically trying to take you away from what is true. But when the truth is over here, it's trying to say, okay, so this is what you should be focused on. But then there's the misunderstandings that come in. And until people understand the truth, their conscience is more aligned with their evil mind. And the um, conscience actually is somewhere in the middle. 
And so that's why there's people that are influenced by fanatical type of uh, understandings or political type of understandings, and they think it's all right to do things that are away from the truth because it's closer to, it's been drawn over by the evil mind. And so the conscience is, you know, not quite under the true side of things. Um, and so that's why understanding the principle, understanding the truth, getting, um, you know, being able to question and, you know, working out, well, am I in the right spot? This is bringing it closer to the truth. And so our conscience, if it's halfway between, and then we're, you know, getting away from that evil mind so much, then we're under the truth. And that's when the conscience really kicks in. So the truth and the conscience is really important to kick in there. And, you know, um, yeah, sorry for everyone that's um, uh, got all the different problems that do kick in. Thank you very much. Thank you, Randall. Thank you. Uh, we've got time for just one more person. Uh, yes, Margaret, go ahead. I want to thank uh, Reverend Yamada for for this morning's hundok. I, I really like the word he used, uh, the program uh, that God created uh, in our five senses. Um, and it really helped me as we are preparing education for pure love, education for young people, uh, that that became very clear. Um, and uh, I want to appeal to members uh, here, uh, those who are educators and, and, and with the science background, it would be nice to get more information on the puberty uh, cores of young people. Um, Reverend Arai talked about the strong desire, you know, the hormone is released when kids reach this puberty age. And therefore I want to connect the signs to the internal makings of strengthening the conscience for young people in preparation uh, for their future. So I welcome any research or any information anybody has uh, in this department uh, as we educate. We, we need not to just spiritualize our education, but have a really good grounding in, in biology and science of what the body goes through. So information can get to the young people as well as PTA parents. Um, so in the past, we did abstinence education uh, to five schools in Palau funded by the public health. And, and now I feel like time has changed so much information and availability of smartphones. Many young people get wrong information. So we're battling with that as well. So anyway, I just am really grateful for Reverend Yamada's uh, ability to bring Father's words into the forefront on a very practical level. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, everyone. It's that time for us to uh, share our unison prayer. And so let's uh, you know, pray for a healthy delivery of uh, Ro and Robert's baby and and uh, yeah, uh, I'll just share the screen. One second. Let's pray together.
Aju, Aju, Aju. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day and see you tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye, everyone. Bye bye. <laughs> Have a bye nice now. day. <laughs> yes, yes, everyone. <laughs> Come, please. Thank you.